home in the studio. It's nice to be back. I'm still feeling a little bit jet lagged from Vietnam. Today's video has a special guest. Some of you might recognize him already because he has a YouTube channel himself and he might actually have a solution to my jet lag. He's on his way. I've come to steal your blood. What? I'm Ash, Ash Beach. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. Yeah, first time. You've come to steal my blood. I've, I've come to steal your blood. I know you like blood. Yes, I've been obsessed with blood. For a, a long time now. Not in a sinister way though, not like in a, uh, a vampire way. In no, a sports related way. In a sports related way, yeah. In a performance sports related way. I'll give you some of my blood. Yeah. Fine, All right. let's do it. That's it, is it? That's, <laughs> That's you, it. Sure I'm easily it. convinced, mate. I've set this up with a test company called Fourth Edge. But basically they do home kits. So you can test your blood wherever. So for people who don't know, you do a lot of Zwift racing on YouTube yes. uh, and performance related videos and yeah. it's been your quest for a while. You had a challenge uh, to try and get to five watts per kilo. That's it. So yeah, so FTP. I, my goal was to try and reach five watts per kilo as my FTP. And in the process of that, I came across a plateau in my fitness, hit a bit of a brick wall and uh, I got blood tested and found that it was to do with my um, the iron in my diet basically and I, w I was anemic basically, yeah, borderline anemic, a, a condition called athlete's anemia that uh, means that yeah I've just not got enough iron in my diet and I can't produce enough red blood cells to meet the physiological demand of my exercise. So that just sent me down a deep dive for about three years of study and then two years of experimentation putting something in taking something out of my diet and lifestyle just experimenting and talking to doctors hematologists cardiologists to find out what is the best thing to do for your blood so i went from borderline anemic to at my peak when i reached five watts per kilo to a 52 percent hematocrit and a 17.6 grams per deciliter hemoglobin which is like i don't know what that means pro level Blood. Amazing. <laughs> We're going to try and get you there. I'm scared. My blood's yeah. going to be terrible. <laughs> I live on a diet of only noodles and rice. Let's see what noodles and rice buys you. An unboxing. What kind of YouTube channel do you think this is? Yeah. <laughs> we got the uh, plasters, cleansing wipes and stuff. So you cleanse at the beginning. These are the lancets. So they're like one use. Just one tube today. Oh, that's cool. And yeah, just a bag to free post. Send it once with milk your blood and that's that's it really i've heard the word hematocrit yep. used a lot on your channel and in other places and when you're looking at um the you know years of epo everyone's talking about hematocrit mm -hmm. and why it's so important what exactly is that and so, why does it matter so hematocrit is the amount of your blood that is red blood cells and you want more red blood cells because they're going to be your oxygen carrying capacity um, the more red blood cells you have, the, the more efficient your oxygen carrying capacity is going to be and efficient the turnover of metabolic waste products from exercise are going to be. And that is why people want to, while they take EPO or they dope, to increase their hematocrit so that they just never, that their threshold is way higher because they, the metabolic waste products get recycled so efficiently. It's completely different to how a normal person functions. You're just trying to get that. Pack in as many red blood cells as possible using EPO. I'm so have you brought some EPO with you? Yeah, well, yeah, it's just that <laughs> it turns out that you can increase your red blood cells naturally. Or I think the aim really for somebody blood testing is to just be more objective about their health and you know not to be outside of the healthy ranges so that they can train through heavy blocks of exercise and be able to complete the workouts because they know that their blood scores are within the healthy ranges because if you're outside of the, uh, the healthy range you've got athletes anemia you're just going to be hitting a brick wall it's going to be very easy for you to plateau in your fitness and not know why unless you blood test uh, you've got me at a bit of a funny time because i'm jet lagged tired i've just <laughs> ridden across vietnam and only eaten rice yeah. for the last month yeah um I'm a bit nervous about these results. No matter, so basically, no matter where you are, it's just about being objective. So I'm hoping that your scores are bad. Not that I wish you were health. <laughs> so I want you to prick your finger. You won't feel it at all. Ah! And then you just want to draw down your finger. Yeah, perfect. How much have you got to fill this thing? To the, uh, well, the top line. No, yeah, it, it fills up quicker than you think, just like it hurts less than you. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, second finger. How much do you want? I can just keep going. I can keep going. Yeah, go on, we'll sell it. <laughs> Combines with the blood. You do it about ten times. Alright, so now that's done, I'm uh, wounded. 
thanks for that. Well, I guess I'm kind of doing this so the viewers don't have to. We'll get the results back. If you could give me some tips now on what yeah. I can do yeah. in the meantime, in the meantime, before we do this again mm -hmm. and see if my blood results have improved. Yes. What, what can I do to increase my hematocrit? You want to increase the amount of iron in your diet for sure. So the, you basically want to increase the building blocks of your blood which is the B vitamins, so it's B12. For me, iron was the thing that took me from a borderline anemic to a 52% hematocrit. That was the thing that made me, allowed me to train to my potential. Just eat iron-rich food for uh, like every meal. And don't drink green tea or coffee around that meal because that will inhibit the absorption of iron. What about iron supplements? So iron supplements, they work for some. Um, but in order to go from anemic, you have to be medically supervised. It didn't work for me, and it hasn't worked for a lot of people, but it does work for some. Top five foods that I should be trying to find Top and five. eat. Five? Yeah. Oh, five. So the thing is, I there's two main foods that I eat, which is black beans and spirulina. My go-to iron sources. Also, dates are really rich in iron. Nice uh, ride food. Look up on something like chronometer. Um, or my fitness pal or something like that. Like that's how I found out what was the most rich iron foods, which is put in the foods that I liked most and then ate the ones that were most iron rich more of the time. And I found that spirulina was the one that is the most iron rich and also has all the other building blocks for blood, all the B vitamins. B12 is indirectly responsible for iron metabolism. So you won't be able to absorb or use the iron that you get in your diet unless you have enough B12 in your body. As endurance athletes cycling, the demand of iron is at its highest of, of anybody. And so we need to make sure that we're getting enough in our diet. And that is again why it's so good to blood test because you just want to be objective about that. Otherwise you're just kind of blind. And that's why a lot of people find it's quite easy to turn to supplementation because they just think, oh yeah, I'll just cover it with with supplements. Do they work? Are you low in iron anyway? It's just all about being objective. So I'm gonna take your advice. For the next few weeks, I'm gonna try and increase the amount of iron that I'm eating, eat more healthily in general. More healthy than just rice and noodles okay. and, and slightly salty water. What sort of results can I expect and what sort of results can you get on the real upper end of the scale? Mm -hmm. Compared to something like EPO, mm -hmm. how much can you actually change your blood? Right, so you're never going to be able to achieve the same results as you can with exogenous EPO. So as you exercise, it will stimulate red blood cell production. As you push yourself through hard, intense exercise, your body's going to try and adapt. And we are just trying to facilitate the adaptation through replenishment of the vitamins and minerals that your body needs in order to make red blood cells. So adapting to the exercise, you're going to try and pack in more red blood cells. And if you don't have the vitamins and minerals from your diet, then you're just never gonna be able to reach your potential. You're already quite lean and you've been trained as a cyclist, so you've got all the mitochondria to have a very high potential. You can probably already hit five watts per kilo as it is. And so it's what it's about is increasing your hematocrit so that you can reach your physiological potential. And with EPO, you're just making that process way easier. You could be anemic now, which is why EPO exists, because it's for ill patients who are anemic. They inject the EPO, um, that stimulates red blood cell production and in a healthy person, that just takes them from the baseline that they are already and then increases it. It basically bypasses the inhibition that your body naturally has to create home homeostasis. So normally you'd have, a, have a, a blood cell count that would be perfectly adapted for your environment. You know, we don't live at altitude. If you did live at altitude, you'd have a high hematocrit because your body's trying to adapt to the low oxygen level. But with EPO, you're exogenously just pushing your body beyond what it normally should do. So the highest my hematocrit has been is 52%. Which... Isn't that similar to what some of the guys who were taking EPO were Yes, at? yeah, well yes, because they're training so hard and they are pushing themselves through the Tour de France, you know, the, the hardest endurance event on the planet. Again. They're able to maintain it the whole They're way through the tour, I guess exactly. that's the difference. Yes, that's the, that's the difference. How much difference do you think having a high hematocrit makes in just everyday life? I think massively. It helps with your cognition, helps with your sleep. These are things that have been proven. Noticeably, the thing is your body is so good at adapting that it always feels like a new, nor like a normal. I definitely know what it felt like when I had a 36% hematocrit when I was borderline anemic. And I was just, it just felt like you were, you, your engine was misfiring a lot, especially when you're trying to push yourself through intense exercise. But also, you know, you just wake up, you feel tired a lot more. But when, yeah, 52% of 
is probably overkill for an everyday person. It's a bit like how you never, as an everyday person, going to need to go over four watts per kilo as an FTP, because what are you going to do with it? As I said at the start of today's video, uh, Ash has his own YouTube channel as well. I'll put the link down below for that. You also ended up writing a book on all of this yes, stuff. Yes, yeah, I put it all condensed three years of study and experimentation into a book called Blood Sport. Again, link down below uh, to all of those things. And thank you for being on the show. It's a pleasure. You're the first guest. I think so, yeah. Ever. You know what I'm most impressed with? Yeah. Lawrence's cactuses are still alive. <laughs> I think it's plastic. Were you winding them up? It's not plastic. No, it's actually real. <laughs>